Hey Bass Geek here. We're gonna talk about fishing for spawning bass even when you can't see them. So fishing for smallmouth when they're bedding is one of my favorite things to do. Now, one of the things I do want to say is if you're fishing for bedding bass, guys, I love to get a glory shot. You guys love it. I love it. But when they're bedding, catch them, snap a couple of quick pictures, get them back on the bed. Okay, let them do their thing. So, you know, as the day's going on, me and Jeremy have been talking and it's something that I feel like, and he kind of told me that I, I should really share with you guys. We're out here and we're fishing for smallmouth. But you know, what are the things that you guys can do with largemouth, you know, with spotted bass? You can go out this time of year and fish for bedding bass anywhere in the country. Now, for you guys down south, of course, it's already over. For a lot of you guys up north, it's not quite over. Even in some of the lakes that are around me, the spawn is already over. But we're gonna talk about the hints that I was kind of sharing with Jeremy today because Jeremy's learning. He watches a lot of bass geek. <laughs> but I'm gonna talk to you about some of the hints and some of the tips that the bass give me that tell me that they're coming to the bed. Now, some of the bass, of course, have already spawned, but I wanna share some of the tips that I share with Jeremy that let us know that the bass are coming to the beds, okay? Hey guys, I know the wind's bad, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. Jeremy's fishing right now, and you notice the rock behind us. So anywhere you are on any lake or any pond, most of the time the bass are gonna to wanna to spawn on a certain type of area. The smallmouth love to spawn on this kind of rock right here. We call it black shell rock. Now it can be steep, but there's all these little crevices and there's some flat little shelves in there. And so those smallmouth will actually get up there anywhere from three to eight feet and they'll spawn on that or between that close to the to maybe a lay down on one side or something like that. But even if you don't know the type of cover or structure or area that the bass spawn in your lake, pond, river, stream, here's the great thing about it. We are in the back of a creek, okay? So we're not in the very back. We're, you know, but look here. This is the back of the creek. There's a little creek that runs in back there. So we're right here. They just don't spawn on what a lot of times everybody thinks about and the very backs of these little pockets back here. Like I said, the very backs of these little pockets back here, as you can see. Instead, the smallmouth I know will spawn again on this stuff. And we've run this stuff all day. Now, if you can't see them, how do you know they're bedding? I'm going to tell you a little trick. And this takes time and it takes, you know, getting to become part of the fishing community. And over time, I've spent a lot of time locating these types of areas. And I understand that they don't just spawn on this, but a lot of times this is the first places or the first type of rock that they'll spawn on. Now there are largemouth in this lake and they will spawn in the back of those pockets back there that we were talking about just a few seconds ago. There's a lot of different baits you can use. As a matter of fact, this morning I flipped a dock because I know that dock. I've fished this lake a lot and I know that dock holds a big bass. Got a hold of him, he knocked himself loose, you know, but we went right to it. So just like this bank right here, we came straight to this bank and what happened, Jeremy? Caught a fish. We caught a fish. So now we didn't catch a lot. I've went down this bank before and caught, you know, 15 pounds on three bass. But here's the deal. So the first thing is guys, you know, learn the types of stuff. And the only way you can do that is eliminating water. Now, the types of baits. So one thing that me and Jeremy have noticed and Again, this comes over time. Smallmouth, Ned Rig, right? Ned Rig, Texas Rig, Wacky Rig. These are all things that we want to drag. Now remember, when you're bed fishing, you wanna drag it through their bed. You don't wanna hop it, because if you miss it by a foot in either direction, 
they may not be pissed off enough to bite it. And that's what you're doing. They're not feeding. When you're bed fishing, it's all about dragging it through that zero to eight foot, if it's spots or smallmouth. Now it can be a lot deeper with smallmouth, depending on the water clarity, okay? You want that edge of clarity, basically, is what you're looking for. Large mouth, it's three foot, five foot or less. We'll stick to that. I know there's other times, but trust me, I've, I've done them. But anyway, all that being said, the baits, you wanna keep the bait simple. And a lot of times if it's open water, you wanna keep it light line. That's why I like to fish with these. So I wanna to talk to you about some of the baits I use on my local lake. Now, hopefully what this does and what this video does is give you guys some ideas on baits that you can use on your lakes, rivers, streams, ponds, whatever it is you're doing. You know, like I said just a few minutes earlier, make sure you're just using this as a way to kind of think about your lake. What is it that they like to spawn on? So if you can't see them, you're not seeing them up on the bed, think about most of the time they need some sort of hard, sandy, gravelly bottom. Most of the time you find those areas, large mouth, small mouth spot, they're gonna spawn in those areas and like i said when we were fishing that last creek we were at the back of the creek we just weren't in those atypical places that you see people catching largemouth so it's a little different and sometimes largemouth will spawn in some atypical places based on the type of lake river stream pond you're fishing don't be frustrated if you're not seeing the things that you know pros and other youtubers are telling you that you should be seeing every place every pond lake river stream it's different so i want to start out showing you with some of the baits now listen there's a lot of ways if you didn't see my last short you guys need to make sure you check that out it's short it's on reels it's TikTok. blah 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 I uh, don't know if it was the last one, but it was talking about finding bass when you can't sight fish. And I run through a lot of moving baits to be able to cover water fast and find bass. And that's the key. If you don't know, if you haven't been fishing a lake like I've been fishing this lake for, you know, I don't know, six, seven years at this point, you need to be able to cover water. But just remember the progression. Main lake or the main body of water or the deeper water in the winter. And as we go, they move to the backs of creeks or to the shallower, flatter areas. And as you can tell, maybe not even necessarily the flatter areas, but the backs of creeks in my case. For example, some of the baits that I talked about was, you know, some of your swim baits. Great little Kitek, you know, this is great for searching. I could throw up there and cover that three to eight foot extremely well and pretty fast with a heavier head and I can find some bass. Now, we didn't use that a lot today because we were pretty sure we wanted to go check two or three places to see if we get got bites. Now, one of the first places that I pulled up on was actually a spot and I lost this fish and it just broke my heart because I know it was a monstrous, monstrous bass. But it was a dock and it had kind of the right type of stuff around it, dirtier water. Couldn't see, I know it was probably three to five foot, but one of my favorite baits when, when you're in heavy cover is the Rage Bug. And most of the time I will tip this just the the very tips, the rage phalange, I guess for lack of a better term, with a little bit of sartreuse because it looks like a bluegill. Watermelon red is one of my favorites. So that's some things that can cover water. Now, the place where you've seen me and Jeremy fish, there's a lot of rock, but it's more open water. In that open water, because there has been a ton of boats, the ramp that me and Jeremy launched from today, there was like four tournaments going out of it. And from what I hear, there was like several tournaments yesterday. So this lake has had several tournaments on it the past two days. So that means it's seen a lot of pressure. So what we wanted to do 
is really slow down. Now in dirtier water, this is one of my favorite worms. And this is a bold bluegill, Bass Munitions makes it. This is one of my angler tungsten Ned heads. Again, guys, angler tungsten, you know, it's great. That's actually a quarter ounce right there. Bold bluegill, you can also get that from Robo Worm. It's a great color in the dirty water and for small mouth. Morning Dawn is another great color. A little, I like that in a little clearer water. I don't remember the name of this worm, but this is a great worm. And this is another way we like to fish for them. Maybe when there's just some light brush. And guys, both of these are like eight, six and eight pound test. This is eight pound test. I think it's an eighth ounce or maybe a quarter ounce. It's a pegged Texas rig. I got it on a two alt EWG. And this, uh, I'll, I'll definitely put the worm name of the worm and the color right here i've got a bunch of them sorry one of the first ones that we boated today was on that particular worm which is why it's uh tore up as you can see L good worm great color I like it in a little more stained water too maybe up the up the lake not a lot of we've not had a lot of rain around right now last but not least this is again my angler tungsten this is my head, my Ned head, quarter ounce. The star of the show today has been the Dojo Ned from Third Eye Fishing. It's in green pumpkin gill, so green pumpkin bluegill, I'm guessing, because it's got some blue and green flake in it. It really is a great color. We've had to do something a little special, and I'm going to tell you how we know these bass are on the bed or coming to the bed and not exactly locked in to the bed at least not where we've fished just yet. All right, so as we've gone on today, what we've been doing is we've really been picking apart this black shell type rock. So what we started experiencing early this morning were pecks. We'd set the hook, we'd swing, we wouldn't get bit. We'd throw right back in. Sometimes with other baits, we wouldn't get a nibble. Or maybe we'd get a second nibble, throw in again, maybe throw a couple of different baits again and we'd get nothing. So a lot of times in the progression of the spawn, what ends up happening is your males will move up on the beds. And when your males move up on the beds, they tend to run everybody off. You'll hear a lot of pro anglers and a lot of anglers like me talk about circles, bass making circles. And those circles will get tighter and tighter as they hone in on a very specific spot that they want the females to come lay eggs so they can fertilize them. What ends up happening a lot of times when they first start moving up is that you're going to get these male bass that are running all the bluegill or bait fish or other males. They're running them away. They're running them out of their area. They're staking claim to a section of the lake that they want for themselves. So a lot of times when you run those search baits, if you don't know what type of rock or what type of structure or cover on your lake, your river, your stream, that you're going to be looking for for these bass to begin laying their eggs, that's what you're going to get. You're going to run something through and you're going to just get this real vicious hit, but they're not going to be there. So what you do is you make sure you follow up with some sort of worm, a Ned rig, an open clear water and open clear water you want to make sure that it's a light line you know that you got your drag set right and that you've got a nice finesse worm especially for these small mouth now if you're fishing for the large mouth you know you can go ahead and, and pick something a little bigger like a jig small mouth tend to be a little more finicky when it comes to this stuff uh, and they tend having small mouths to really pick up by the tails of baits. So if you're throwing a regular shaky head in, a lot of times they won't get it. As a matter of fact, this is a little long. One of the things that I've been doing today because we miss so many bites is I've been cutting down these worms and bringing the hook way out by the tail. They're not concerned with action. I don't even know that they're really concerned with color because when you drag it through their bed, it just pisses them off. Some of those hits you do need, you need to pay attention to where you're getting those vicious hits and throw back in. But a lot of times when they're first moving up, they're not gonna come back and hit it. But every bite we had today, every fish that we caught or that I seemed to break off on, every single one, we didn't feel the bite. Picked it up and I noticed the line was sw swimming back toward me or off to the left or right. Reel down, set the hook, 
the fish would be there. So those fish are committed because they're picking it up, they're moving that bait away from from that bed, from their spot. But guys, I hope this helps you out. I hope this helps you think about the spawn differently because I know growing up, I remember reading Bassmaster Magazine and I, they'd talk about winter fishing and be like, look for those 45 degree banks. Well, as you can see behind me, they're all 45 degree banks. That's what I fish. So sometimes the typical information doesn't help. I want to show you a little bit about the things that I like to do. And this is one of my favorite bites of the year. I'm off all this week and I can't wait to keep making some good videos for you guys this week. It's only going to get better. By the way, moon phase and temperature. Full moon's best, new moon works, but the temperature needs to be, at least where I'm at, 58 to 63. That's when they start. And that's a first thing in the morning temperature. So if you're out here and it's 12 o'clock and it's 70 degrees that day and it's showing 61, no, wrong, eh, never mind. You need to know what the first thing. Shave about three degrees off that. That's probably what it was this morning. Before I grind the nose of my boat off, as always, questions, comments in the comment section below. You guys know I love to talk about bass fishing with you or any fishing, really. I can learn like it if you like it don't forget to subscribe make sure you ring that bell so you get the notifications when these videos come out guys please make sure you ring that bell as a lot of us say youtube hates real fishing okay they hate it if you're you know you're doing a bunch of crazy stuff that's entertaining nothing against that they like those guys better than they like us so make sure you ring that bell and you hit that sub button it helps us all out and as always you guys rock